Load up your Ghost Warthog with your Marines, go on a rampage, and then use a Wraith for the final Phantom. That's pretty much how you do this mission. But uh, I'm going to show you the whole thing anyway. Hello, I'm RC and I'm doing Legendary Solo Spartan Ops from Halo 4. This is the first episode and the first chapter, Land Grab on the Map Quarry. When I first did this, I did it in a Wraith, and that's totally possible, it's probably the easiest way to do it. That's how I also got the Crimson Alone achievement. But I decided that that ended up a little bit too much like one of the later missions that I also use a Wraith in. And I don't want it to look like carbon copies, even though they are on the same map, and it ends up looking quite similar. So I decided to redo it with the Ghost Warthog, and that actually ended about 5 minutes faster, so I guess that's better for both of us. Here's the Ghost Warthog on the right hand side here. Marines are just behind you. One of them has the rocket launcher. If you're doing this co-op, you probably want to initially grab separate warthogs, multiple warthogs, and then going attack onto this left side here. Don't go to the right because there are about four shade turrets that will absolutely rip you to pieces. Go for the ghost, and then there's a wraith a little bit behind here. There's the wraith. The whole mission here is basically just sort of standard Warthog combat driving. Get in range so that your gunners can take out all the enemies for you. And then try and keep your guy with the rocket launcher at the right angle so he can also do damage as well. I usually go for this generator first because it's basically the closest. And then I like to come back to this one over here. So an elite with a Fjord gun here, you got to be careful with him. Fortunately I think he was distracted a little bit because he was standing on the turret there. Could be quite aggressive with him because you haven't got much room to manoeuvre. So just hope and pray that your marines can take him out quickly enough. And then once you've taken out that second generator on that little outcropping there, these two ghosts will actually bug out and so you can actually get them from behind, which is pretty useful. There's another wraith back here. Again, pretty standard stuff. Don't go at it directly, it's going to blow you up. Go past it, circle around. you got a bit of space up to the side of the area. Couple of ghosts as well. Don't go charging into too many enemies, because again, you'll get ripped apart pretty quickly. In co-op, you can actually end up with all four of you in race, and then it goes super, super quick. Absolutely murder everything that gets dropped off on the Phantoms from midway towards the end of this mission. Just gotta keep strafing around. Some of the wraiths have gunners on them, so others don't. If they don't, you can get really close in. Just be aware of it. Also, a lot of enemies with Fjord guns. Those are your second biggest threat. Well, including him. And again, you don't want to go straight onto any of these enemies. You always want to be going at an angle, so... The Fjord gun rounds are pretty slow, so if you're going at an angle, they'll often miss you. using the full extremities of the map there. Whoops. See, going at an angle, they're missing me even from pretty close range. And not even going very fast. I think I'm done now. So after your four cores, just gotta clean up any ones that you didn't manage to kill on the first assault. And then a few phantoms will come down and drop more enemies across this sort of middle section of the map. Crimson, more covies arriving. Be ready. Because this map is basically ripped straight from the campaign and they had to have this very wide flat area for the mammoth to roll through, the actual landscape isn't particularly interesting that you actually have to drive around on. And so for that you can't do 
too much sort of ducking behind any hills because basically there aren't any. So you are going to have to flank quite a long way around sometimes. So I'm coming down here and I think I decide yeah there's quite a lot of enemies there. Maybe I should flank around to the right. Of course if you're all in race and you're on co-op and stuff you can just blast those guys as soon as they're dropping out of the phantoms. But on your own, this Ghost Warthog method ended up a bit faster. A bit more mobile. The race is of course very very powerful and it'll take out most enemies one maximum two shots. But because it's a mortar and it goes in an arcing path, it's a bit harder to use. It's a lot more difficult to get used to than the Ghost Warthog, which is pretty much the same as you've seen in other games. The main difference from the Ghost Warthog from, say, Hilo Reach is that the, the main gun, the Gauss, or Gauss, I think some people pronounce it, I don't know which one is correct, fires quite a bit slower than it did in Halo Reach. But actually the Marines use it as fast as they can actually fire it in this game, whereas in Reach they just sort of didn't fire it for no particular reason. So once you get used to this fact that it is slower firing than you might be used to, you can know how much damage you can put on these enemies and how far away you need to be before you need to get out. Whoops. That's another tip, really. If you've got so far that you've unlocked the specialization armor mod that allows you to recover from EMPs and stuff, absolutely equip it for this mission. Getting pretty close to the end. I think it's just these guys here and then another phantom on top of the mesa. I think I'm a little bit too far away for my guy to target him for some reason. And see that would be the advantage of, of an actual player in the Warthog with you because they don't have any range limits. Decided to just go up here and use the Ghost Warthog myself to take out the turret of that phantom. And then after this I'm going to use the Wraith instead. Oh no, he's driving away. Don't want that. Just going to, get, <clears throat> just going to keep one of the Marines with me. So he can serve as a gunner on my Wraith. The reason I'm not taking the Ghost Warthog up there is because there's not really much room to maneuver around. There's quite a lot of enemies with Fjord guns and concussion rifles and they'd kind of probably blast me off there. Nope. Gotta get him out so he'll actually get in my wraith. Nice crimson, using the enemy's toys against them. And there we go, eventually. The advantage of it being a mortar here is that I can sort of fire it up and it'll come down on them. over objects that are actually helping block their fire from me, like that box. A couple of hunters there. They're no problem once you get a wraith. Two shots I think it is, even on legendary. So this ends up taking me about 10 minutes in total this level. Obviously if you've got co-op you can do that a lot faster. Five minutes, pretty standard time in four player co-op, even on legendary. Because I've just got four times as much fire pile. And just one left. 
There we go. That's it. Done. Obviously in co-op you can split your group, you don't all have to be in the same place. Four generators, four of you, you go for one each to start with. And then absolutely obliterate the reinforcements as they come down on the phantoms. Oh, having to wait a bit for this to trigger there. There we go. Time 10 minutes 8 seconds. Done. Legendary solo, no deaths. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, on the left, you'll have a link to the full Spartan Ops Season 1 playlist, and the right is linked to Episode 1, Chapter 2, Sniper Rally. So go check them out if you want. I'm RC, and I'll see you next time.